It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Millsy. Back with Hometown Commander. Back for another episode of Millsy Brew. This is here where I brew my version 1.0 deck list of the Commander in front of us on my quest to brew the magic world. There's always that link is going to be down in the description for you below. As well as I'd really appreciate it if you could interact with the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Considering becoming a membership of the member of the channel where you could see all the videos early. As well as check out the links in the description. Today... We are finishing up um, the last of our Dusk Warren Commanders for the week with Winter Misanthropic Guy, a Jund 3-4 Human Warlock with Ward 2. This is beginning your upkeep. Each each player draws two cards. And as long as we can fulfill Delirium, each opponent's maximum hand size is 7 minus the number of those types. So a really interesting uh, thing, right? We're making our opponents draw, which we could pay off by having effects to say when your opponents draw cards, you lose a life, which are all throughout the deck. I'm realizing now that I go to record this video that it's not in the PowerPoint, so we'll kind of talk about that more if we see it in the playtest. But because we're going to end up inevitably setting our opponents up to discard down, right, to hand size on their turn if they're not careful, this or, or use other effects to force our opponents to discard, this means that we can use these discard matters styles effects that give us value when cards are discarded to really take advantage of things. We're also going to try to fill our own graveyard for Delirium so we can talk about ways to get things back from our graveyard or just to have value from things being in our grave as we're milling ourselves to get this value. This first section here is a teeny bit of a mix between draw and, you know, discard payoff. Obnixless can deal a damage to an opponent whenever they draw a card. I'm realizing this one's a little bit misplaced now that I see it here on this section. But we are playing things like Underworld Dreams to deal damage every time a player draws a card. You know, we have these effects in the deck uh, to pair along with Winter, but we also want to make sure we have effects that care about when opponents discard things. So, uh, Aklazot's Deepest Betrayal says whenever it attacks, each opponent discards a card. For those who can't, we draw a card. Whenever our opponent discards a land, we get a bat. And whenever it dies, we bring it back in on its backside. Bone Miser says whenever we dis discard a creature card, make it 2 to zombie. Whenever we discard a land, we get double black. And whenever we discard a non-creature, non-land card, we draw a card. Fell Spectre says that when it enters the battlefield, target opponent discards a card, and whenever an opponent discards a card at all, that player loses two life. There's a lot of these style effects to just make it that we're so as we're just draining our opponents out as they're discarding. Dark Deal says each player discards all the cards in his or her hand, then draws that many cards minus one. Well, here's a way for us to fill up our own guardian forever, potentially force all our opponents to start discarding and getting these effects coming back. Croaks it feels right whenever it comes in or attacks, each opponent discards a card, and then each who can't. The H who didn't discard a non land card this way loses three life. So Croaksa can be a great way to force some discards and then be a creature in our graveyard for different effects. Magus the Wheel can tap to have each player discard their hand and draw seven cards. A great bait would go just repeatedly get this discard style of style payoffs over and over again and can potentially right, get us things into our graveyard to fulfill delirium. Rankle's a great attacker for our deck. Whenever it deals damage to a player, we choose any number of them, which one of them is each player discards a card. Again, getting away for us to get things into the graveyard. Sir Conrad, dealing a damage to each opponent. Whenever a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves our graveyard, or another creature dies, it's dealing one damage to each opponent. Just, again, helping them kind of ping that damage in, and as they're discarding things, if those are creature cards then they're going to take a damage from Sir Conrad. Turgrid is probably the nice, nasty way to pay off this discard stuff. Whenever opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent, you can put that from the graveyard onto the battlefield under control, a way to just steal those things and take real advantage of them going to the graveyard. Blood Chief Ascension, once we can turn it on line, also starts to ring out our opponents. At the beginning of each end step, and if opponent lost two or more life this turn, we get to put a counter on Blood Chief uh, Ascension. And then whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, if it has three or more quest counters on it, you may have that player lose two life. If you do, we gain two. So all we need to do is get it turned online, and then every time a card is going to an opponent's graveyard, they're losing two life and we're gaining two, and just start to really wring our opponent's life totals out. Lonely on his caress, whenever opponent discards a card, they're losing two life. You can start to see more of these. Oppression, whenever a player casts a spell, that player discards a card. This will, this will hit us too, but I don't think we mind that, right? Because we need to fill the delirium in our graveyard and make sure it's there. Underworld Dreams. 
whenever a player draws a card, a player, you know, damage to that player, and then Waste Knot, which is probably one of the best things to pair with Winter. Whenever an opponent discards a creature, we make a 2-2 zombie. Whenever they discard a land, we add double black. Whenever they discard a non-creature, not land, we draw a card. So lots of way to profit from our opponent's discarding things. Well, how do we get things back from our own graveyard? That's where we have the recursion for it. We have things like Chainer, where we can pitch a card to cast a creature from our graveyard. And if we um, get it in from our graveyard, it has haste. We have something like Six that can mill cards when it attacks. Uh, and then as long as it's our turn, non-land permanents have retrace. We can pitch a land in addition to its cost to cast them back out. We have the Precon Commander Winter. Whenever it attacks, we mill three cards. And then at the beginning of our end step, we can exile any number of cards from our graveyard with four more types among them. And if we do, we get to permanent from among them back on the battlefield with a finale counter. A great way to start recurring not only just creatures, but other things as well that we might need. Breach the Multiverse is a great way to fill everyone's graveyard and get some big things back for just seven mana. Uh, fill everybody's graveyards up, get the best of all of them back from everybody's graveyard, and just take a big swing of um, momentum in the game. Reanimate can get any creature from a graveyard back under our control. We just have to pay life equal to its mana value. And then Victimize is a great recursion spell just for us. Sacking creature, you get two back from our graveyard. And allowing us to probably not too often change our delirium count but just get a really powerful creature back noxious revival can get any card from a graveyard back on top of its owner's library we can use this either for us or to stop an opponent from doing something in their graveyard peerless recycling can get some permanence from our graveyard back to our hand which is pretty cool if we need to get some key things back from our graveyard and then virtue of persistence can start bringing a creature from any graveyard back under our control beating a our upkeep, allowing us to really get some key creatures of ours back or our opponents back, right, as they're pitching and discarding these things. Well, there's plenty of ways to make our graveyard matter. We have things like Corum, the alternate commander from that Jun deck from Modern Horizons 3. It says whenever it it gets plus X plus O, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in all graveyards. When it attacks, each player mills a card, and then during each of our turns, we can play a land and cast a spell from among cards in all graveyards that were put there from libraries this turn. So this allows us to play cards from other people's graveyards as well, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's an interesting ability, and it allows us to have a nice um, a body that, that, that cares about what's in the graveyard. Brass's Tunnel Grinder says when it enters, we can discard any number of cards and then draw that many cards plus one. Good way to potentially seed some things into our graveyard. This is the beginning of each end step if we descended this turn. So if a permanent was put into our graveyard from anywhere, we put a bore, uh, put a bore counter on it. And there's three or more. It flips over into Tekla, uh, Tekutlin, which um, says whenever we cast a permanent spell with mana used produced by it, we discover X where X is that spell's mana value. So we'd potentially uh, you know, discover into more things, more value from just feeding our graveyard like we already want to do to set up Delirium. Drag to the Roots is a removal spell that costs four, but it only costs two if we have Delirium, destroying a non-land permanent. Well, there we go. Here's a nice removal spell that gets that matters for us having stuff in our graveyard. And then Matt Zelanti, Matt Zelantley. Let's just draw and then discard. So we potentially feed into our graveyard. And then if we have four more types among permanents in our graveyard, we can flip it over into the core, tapping for mana, where X is the number of permanent cards in our graveyard, allowing us potentially to tap for a big amount of mana that way um at the end of the day like i said before on the show and i'll say it again this is my version 1.0 version of winter i think the deck does what i want it to do but i think there's a lot of semantics that we need to figure out in testing do i have enough ways to punish our opponents when they discard cards like me grim adding another effect like that dealing damage to them when they do it do we have enough recursion pitching our big creatures and trying to get them back with the other other recursion spells maybe adding something like coiling rebirth giving us the option to get a copy of it as well. Valgaboth could be a fun way to pay off um, Winter by forcing our opponents to exile the things that would go into their graveyard instead and allowing us to play cards from among them. Basically just turning their exile into our second, third, and fourth hands, right? And just getting value that way. I think there's a lot of ways to understand how we can make Winter more consistent. I think the deck does pretty good at filling up our own graveyard and getting de delirium. The question is, how often can we really make sure that we're stopping our opponents from having too big of a hands, forcing them to discard and really getting into the value? Well, let's get into playtest number one. Keeping a four lander with a polluted system, which says whenever one or more cards are put into your graveyard from from your library, each opponent loses a life for each 
Kuiper among them. And uh, on the Dubli Dim Oubliette side, whenever you unlock this door, mill three and return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. We got Grizzly Salvage start looking through the top five and getting Delirium set up and Twitching Doll for some mana. Turn one, we'll get that um, Zeotaurus Proving Ground down. That way we can set up this Thornspire Verge to start um, tapping for the goods. And we'll get Twitching down all down. This would lead to a turn three winter, but... I don't know if that's what we want to do quite yet. I kind of like to see if we could start trying to set up our graveyard. If I do the winter, this means on my next turn, everybody's going to draw two, and I need to make sure I hit Delirium. So I think I'd rather use the Grizzly Salvage. We'll do the Twitching Doll for it. We get to reveal the top five. And then we can put a creature or a land from among them into our hand and put the rest in our graveyard. So we reveal the Caress. Cataract Parasite, which deals the damage to a player um, whenever they draw a card, as long as we have a red permanent. Omnivore's Flytrap, which just puts some counters around as long as we have Delirium. Tarmogoyf Nest, which is a great way to um, start making those Tarmogoyf tokens to flood our board, and Fell Spectre. So I have to bring a creature, right? So at the end of the day, I'm putting one, two, uh, two card types into my graveyard, three once the salvage goes. And then four, because I can only take one creature. So we're just turning on Delirium this turn. I like the idea of the Fell Spectre. I like the idea of the pa Parasite. I like the idea of Flytrap to start spreading some counters around. I'm sure there's arguments for which of these I should take. The nice part is I have this Victimize, meaning that if I have a way to make a token uh, with anything or you know something like that, then I could always get it back. Uh, with the vict I can always get the other two back with the Victimize. So it really doesn't matter which I pick. Um, there's a lot of options uh, to what I can get back, right, because of that Victimize. I think I get the Parasite back, and now we have set up Delirium. So Delirium's good to go. We'll hold up um, Black Green. We'll hold up Terminate just in case anybody has something too crazy going on. But now here at the start of turn four, we've got five mana. Winter's four. Croaks is pretty fun there. But I think we'll go Winter into Keterk Parasite. So now Parasite's turned on because we have Winter. And Winter says, at being all our upkeep, each player pays two. And so we have Delirium. So each opponent's maximum hand size is equal to seven minus the number of uh, card types in our graveyard, which remember is one, two, three, four. So their maximum hand size is three. So now they're just gonna start pitching cards if they're not playing them. Cataract will deal some damage when they draw. So we've kind of got some of our engine here kind of started up. Ooh, Life from the Loam is a fun draw. Getting a way to feed our graveyard even more. I kind of like the idea of getting the Fell Spectre back. Uh, I'm a horse flytrap could really start putting around those. Um, could really start putting around those uh, uh, counters. I like the idea of Kroxa. Kroxa could be fun here to get some discard on our opponents. Life from the Loam wouldn't be bad to start dredging. I like that Keterex, sorry, everybody draws two. I apologize because of uh, Winter. So um, now people's hands are going to be a little bit more full. Here's something like Grist, right, to start uh, filling up our graveyard even more. Let's see. I like the idea of Grist. Plus one to make the insect. It says, make it and then mill a card. We mill Blazebird Verge. That's another uh, card type, so we're up to five. So everybody's maximum hand size is now two. And then uh, repeat the, 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 if it was an insect. It's not, but I think what I really want to do is take that insect and immediately sacrifice it to this Victimize to bring Fell Spectre and the Flytrap back, right? That's a great way to get those two back. Flytrap, let's see. Whenever it enters our attacks, if there's four or more card types among cards in the engraver, which there is, we distribute two plus one plus one counters among two target creatures. We'll give Fell Spectre one, and we'll give Winter one. And then if there's six or more card types, we double the amount of counters in them. I think there's four or five. One, two, th one, two three, four, five. So just five. So we're not up to six yet, but that's a-okay. Grist is already coming in handy, right? Make some attacks if we want to with... um. Winter, but I mean, we've done our job, right? Everybody had to, someone had to pitch something when Fail Spectre came in, dealing uh, two damage to them. 
Everybody's still taking damage when they draw. Everybody's discarding down on their end step, taking damage from the Fell Spectre. You can start to see that this setup's kind of got itself working. Ooh, Wind Grace is interesting there. Um, I like the idea of starting with Kroxa to get everybody to discard. I apologize, we have to draw two more. With Kroxa, dealing some damage that way, getting everybody to discard. Let's go ahead and Grist. Everybody's got to, uh, everybody's got to deal with that now. Nox Survival can get something back. We've got Terminate still. we got Farsafe to do some ramping. Uh, we might as well, right? I'm trying to think if I have any good dual-type lands that I can remember in the deck. I mean, the Tri-Land, right? The Zetora's Proving Ground is the one we really want. Okay, case so we can just go use that nice small during Marsh. Again, I just try to play the Farsic there to feed the Graver. And I feel like really all we need to do now is just protect Winter as best we can. We could do uh, something like Wind Grace. We could Life from the Loam to get the Verge back and just set that up right for Dredge. Right? Um, go to Combat Attack with the, the, the Fly Trap, get some more counters on things. And I think right now we're in a good spot to just say that we're kind of where we want to be board wise. It's just now going to be about extending the amount of card types in our graveyard with Winter so that our opponents can't have hands and just, just really just trying to siphon down the board as we um, get towards uh, controlling the board even more and more. But let's get into playtest number two. Keeping a one, two, three lander with uh, Faithless looting for a way to get some things out of the graveyard, Grist for some mill, reanimate. Fate Unraveler to deal some damage when somebody draws a card. So I like this. A good start so far. We have the way to get a couple lands into our graveyard. We'll start with the... Uh, we'll start with the Riveteer's Outlook to get a mountain. So we could set up that uh, Faithless Looting next turn if we need to. Turn two, Smoldering Marsh. Don't mind the Smoldering Marsh. I also don't just mind uh, playing something like Twisted Landscape. We could always just get the Swift Boots down this turn, or we could Faithless Looting, right? We have options. So let's try the Faithless Looting. Draw two, two lands, okay. Pitch a land. Oh, no, that's my only other black source at the moment. I guess I could pitch that for a black later. an enchantment creature right so that's two more types and then I'll pitch a land so that's uh, three types right now so we're, uh, four with with uh, with a uh, fifth assuming so now we have delirium right online just one mana the landscape will crack the landscape for a swamp now we'll come back to our turn three. We see Lignify, a way to um, uh, a way to remove a creature by removing its ability, but it's also a dual type, which is important. I think the answer is Grist to this turn. Get a loyalty counter, make an insect, mill a card, which is Tree of Tales. So that's an artifact and a land. So we're up to one, two, three, four, five, I think. So we're doing really well. Coming into turn four. Now we can play Winter, and Delirium's online, so we already said it was, right, we already said it was one, two, three, four, five, right, so now our opponent's maximum hand size is two, right, so now we're already starting to shut them down, we'll Grist again, uh, now it's, I'm sorry, now it's six because of the Evasion of Chandelier, so now they're just down to one card, they're going to have to really start pitching their hands, and I think this is where this deck really comes into handy, is forcing them to really have to deal with their hands starting to go lower and lower and lower as we just continue to um, get ahead. we got to draw two more because of um, winter. Quorum could be fun, getting that started online. We do have the option of something like uh, reanimate. But um, I like Wind Grace too. I also like Ifnir as a way to just start hurting our opponents, or we cycle or discard a card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponent's control. We can use things like Lord Windgrace to discard cards. There's other ways in the deck to do that. So we can start to see some synergy going on here. 
I'll play the if near. Let's tick up Grist again for a Dakmore Salvage. This is great because now we can dredge with it, get it back to our hand, and get some more cards right into our graveyard. And uh, I like this spot now. Now our opponents drew two cards, and like I said, their their um, maximum hand size is down to one. So they're they're going to get brutalized having to either work through their hands or just end up pitching the things they're at. Coming back to our turn, we have the choice to dredge this uh, Dakmore Salvage back. I think I'm not going to. I think I'd kind of rather draw here. Let's see what we can get ourselves into. Max the Wheel can really start working, right? Our opponents through their decks, right? Everybody discarding their hard, their hand and gaining and drawing seven, right? I like the idea of the Wind Grace here. Go up to pitch a land, draw two. That's going to trigger if near to put minus one, minus one counters on all creatures our opponents control. Then I guess I'll take up Grist again. Make another insect. I think we should be up to three of those there. Mill a card for a dark deal. We already had a sorcery, but that's okay. I'm hoping to try to... What I'm trying to do here is pitch a card this turn, so if it'll get up to minus two, minus two. We'll pitch the Lignify, so that way we have another type in our graveyard. And I actually think we have seven, so now they have no maximum... They have maximum hand size is zero. And again, we're just continuing to wring our hands around the necks of our opponents as they're not going to be able to get any cards um, to be held in their hand. They're just going to be continually pitching their hands. I think here on turn seven... We'll play the forest. I like the idea of getting something like Sir Conrad down to continue to start ringing their necks. But hey, if we have creatures we want to get back, we can use that. Um, we can use that uh, victimize. I don't see anything besides that uh, fate unraveler. But what I can do is um, maybe tick up Lord Windgrace again. Pitch. Let's see, I really want to play the Grim, but that doesn't leave me enough mana to Grim and Victimize. I could do it with Corum though. So we could think about playing Corum, pitching the... Um, sorry, let's do it this way. Let's play the Wheel, pitch the um, Conrad to Lord Windgrace. Then we um, Victimize, losing an Insect. Oh no, what did I just do? Then we're going to go ahead and just get back, you know, Conrad and uh, Fate Unraveler with the Victimize. Now our opponents are losing life when they draw. The wheel is going to start just, again, dealing damage. When they discard, they have a chance to disc, you know, their hands are going to have a chance to get hurt to the gr Grim. And I think, again, you can start to see as we set this board up, it's just start ringing down our opponent's boards as they have to deal with things. That we have but let me know what do you think of winter down in the comments section below again i think the deck's premise is there i think the idea is there i think there's still some finesse that we could get in testing but i like where the deck's at and i think it would just take some playing to understand do you even out the card types more um you know what parts of those decks need more love but i'd love to know what you think of winter down in the comment section below and i catch you guys next time